team number one. Our topic is automotive gearbox design. My team consists of Cesar Rivera, Tom Costa, and I know how to spin it. Our topics today will be based on the basic parts of a gearbox, the types of gearbox, and their applications. Now I'll be starting with the basic parts. The first thing that you'll see in the gearbox the most basic thing is a, a gear, which is a flat or the object with two edges. And the most common gears used for gearbox are spur gears and heel pull gears. The, mo the one that you use the most is a heel, heel pull gear. The, the reason for that is because they mesh more smooth and work better and are less and give out less noise. The way that how the way that it works is that the motor when it starts and the clutch is engaged, it'll turn the, the lay shaft right here. And the lay shaft will turn all these gears right here and they're always turning their mesh to the actual shaft. And up and the gears on the output shaft are also turning with the other gears at all times. The gears on the on the output shaft are they're always sliding, they're never turning the output until they're in gear. And the way that to set up a gear to be engaged, that's through a the the dark gear right here, if you can see that. I'll I'll fade that in the next slide. Normally in the car, to change a gear you move a stick. The stick will move several mechanical push rods connections and those rods will move the fork gear which is right here in yellow and that is also connected to a dog gear which you can see right here the dog gear has inner teeth which is meshed to the apple shaft and you can see that right here how it's all teeth bound on the apple shaft and the way that the gear connects to the, to the, the dog gear connects to the actual gear and and the way that they don't grind is using a synchro. So when the dog gear is sliding into a gear, this synchro will create friction between the two. So at the end, they'll be cycling and rotating at the same speed, and the mesh will be smooth. Types of transmissions. Uh, in this uh, uh, presentation, we will uh, see the different types of. Uh, transmissions that currently automobiles have. First of all, we're going to start with the manual transmission, the unsynchronized uh, trans sliding mesh transmission. Basically what it is, it doesn't have any synchronization in between. Um, the driver is going to have to control um, the revolutions per minute of the engine in order to switch gears. Um, they are built on spur gears Thus, you can see here. Uh, you can see there is a lot of noise, and um, it's actually less reliable. It has short time since not the driver is not only has to be conscious of the road, but also conscious of the revolutions of the engine in order to switch gears. Now there is the other kind of manual transmission, which is the synchronized constant mesh gearbox, which uh, basically is helical gears that are always in contact, like Eduardo explained in the previous slides. Uh, it maximizes the life and uh, it has a color or the dark color that uh, Eduardo was talking about and it synchronizes between gears so you don't have to be uh, really careful of the how many revolutions per minute does the engine has. Mm -hmm. Then we move to automatic transmission. It, this is the most popular uh, transmission um, in the world per se. Um, it began, it's, 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 it's beginnings were, you know, were really tough because uh, it was very unreliable. Um, it was not uh, as, as the parts worn out a lot faster. Now with days, everything, you know, became uh, better and it uses spurred and heel key gears. It uses a combination of both. Now the semi-automatic uh, gives the driver the opportunity to select the gears at the same time. Uh, the, the, the transmission is uh, doing them by themselves, but you can control that. Now we move on to the dual clutch gear system. This is the most current uh, gear system. What it is is basically two gearboxes in one hole. Um, one 
tree is based on the odd number of gears. Second tree is, ma is, is, is mainly on even number of gears. Uh, inter internally, as I mentioned, it carries two, gear two gearboxes at once. The gear changes it within milliseconds. Um, since it has two clutches, one is, in cl in, in, one is um, handles the odd numbers, the other one handles the even numbers, and they're very close together, so the switching between them is, is really in milliseconds. The next uh, uh, gearbox that we're going to talk about is a continuous variable transmission. Uh, basically, its function is it doesn't have uh, as many pinions as many as many gears as uh, the previous designs. However, you can go up to infinite number of gear ratios, which is very uh, surprising for a gearbox. Uh, mainly, it's composed of epicyclic gears, and those epicyclic gears are connected through a, a, a hydraulic pump that basically uh, changes the speed inside the gearbox. Thus, you know, allowing for these uh, speed ratios being unlimited. Next. Okay, we've now considered the applications. We've spoken quite a bit about uh, the internal workings and the types of uh, gearboxes. But now about the applications of the gearbox. Typically, when we think of a gearbox in the context of automobiles, we think of the transmission system. That's always the first thing on a driver's mind. On an off-road enthusiast's mind, it might be, for example, the transfer case, the differential, so on and so forth, because they have uh, four-wheel drive vehicles, which of course need more mechanical parts. Uh, typically, you have mostly to concern yourself with the transmission and the differentials and the transfer case. There are other types of gearboxes on the car, but for now we're going to focus on these. Next slide, please. The motivation for a differential, basically what it does is it takes one input and creates two outputs. These two outputs can be in any orientation with the input and another purpose that they serve can be seen from this slide here. When a car is turning, come back please. When a car is turning, every wheel is has a different turning radius. For example, if we draw a tangent line through this one, we see that it has this radius. If we draw a tangent line through this one, we see it has this radius. Then the front wheels, this one has a different radius from this one, and each of these has a different radius from these. So in other words, all four wheels are spinning at different angular velocities because for rigid body dynamics, we know that the car as a whole can only have one angular velocity. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So this is where we get to the different types of drivetrain uh, gearboxes. In two-wheel drive cars, either the front or the rear wheels are driven by the engine, and in this case you have only one differential, either the front or the back, depending on the front wheel or rear wheel drive. In four-wheel drive, however, you have two differentials, one in the front, one in the back, and then you have in the center a transfer case. The transfer case can be thought of as another transmission because many of them have high and low gear settings, which are excellent for uh, driving in snow and off-roading. And so a lot of people consider them to be built in the same fashion as a transmission, but it's not exactly. The front uh, differential can operate in the exact same manner as the rear differential because their purpose is only, again, to take one input, to turn into two outputs, and to allow the wheels to spin differently. There are some differentials called a limited slip differential, which keeps the two wheels rotating at roughly the same speed, which is great for driving in rain or snow. Uh, another type of, of limited slip differential would be a viscous clutch, where it's not exactly a gearbox, but it has a, a case filled with silicone or some other type of uh, viscous material. And as the two wheels rotate at different speeds, the plates inside heat up this silicone and the silicone turns solid. So it, it helps equalize the, the angular velocity between the two. Uh, other gearboxes can be used on a car. It doesn't have to be differential or transfer case or transmission. For example, power windows, power seats, uh, the automatic uh, opening gates on some of the SUVs and minivans, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, this pretty much covers everything for gearboxes. Uh, thank you very much for your